So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the, the invitation. Thank you for to Manutech and, and, and Minalogic for this invitation. I'm very glad today to be able to present to you our company and our product. Uh, Microlite 3D is uh, a company that is uh, five years old now. Uh, the technology that we call two photon polymerization, that I will explain to you uh, in a moment, is based on 15 years of uh, research at the University of Grenoble. Uh, it's uh, the, the company itself develop and manufacture and sell 2D and 3D uh, high resolution printers. Uh, our uh, key differentiators is to be able to print with submicron resolution. We, we sell our system worldwide uh, with more than 60% outside of France. And uh, a very important point is uh, to be very close to our customer for the, the training and to help them to develop their process uh, and also to improve our equipment and software based on their uh, requirement. So let's look at uh, the, the 3D printing technology uh, that we call the, the two photon absorption technology. So how, how can we uh, basically print below the, 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 the optical limit, below the optical standard resolution? Well, it's based on the fact that we uh, use a nonlinear interaction between the, the material and the laser. Uh, if you look to this uh, picture, you see on the bottom uh, a standard one photon absorption. So you have from the left uh, a laser beam, which is focused inside of a polymer. The polymer is the, 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 the VLs in the, in the VL in the, in the middle with the, the green uh, uh, polymer inside. And you see that uh, the, with one photon absorption, you will absorbed all along the thickness of the polymer. So you, you will basically create uh, an object which is, which is as long as the thickness of the polymer. Now, uh, if you look from the, the, the bottom, the top uh, objective coming from the right hand side, again, we focus the laser beam inside of the polymer, but this time uh, we work with uh, very short uh, pulsed laser and with an appropriate wavelength. And in that case, we have some we, we have some two photon absorption. And what you see is the the very small uh, bright dot in the middle of the polymer. The, the interaction between this polymer and the laser will occur only inside of this very bright dot. And by moving this uh, very small focal point inside of the, the polymer, uh, we will be able to transform the, the and to solidify the polymer to initiate the, the polymerization uh, chemical reaction and create an object uh, in with any shape, a 3D object. So let's look at the, the, the smallest object that we can print that we call a voxel. You know, in the in the 2D, when you print in 2D or, or when you have a camera, you, you're to, talking about a pixel, which is the smallest dot in a plane that you can print. In 3D, we are talking about volume, so instead of pixel, we talk about voxel. So the smallest voxel, you have a picture of it uh, on the, the right hand side. It's been taken, uh, the picture has been uh, obtained thanks to a scanning electron microscope. The, the, the top 
part of the picture is the, the horizontal cross section of the voxel. It's about 200 nanometer in diameter. And the bottom part of the picture is the vertical cross section. And you see that in that case, we have around 600 nanometer of uh, diameter. So the smallest object that we can print in voxel is uh, like a, a grain of rice and is 200 by 600 nanometers. Then by moving this uh, voxel and by attaching this voxel one to the other, we will create any 3D shape with uh, uh, okay, let, let's, let me show you some examples. Which we, oh, first uh, I show you the, the equipment. This one is the, the one that, which is dedicated to, uh, to research uh, laboratory. It's called the Microfab 3D system. And uh, we have three types of, uh, of equipment. They, they all give uh, similar results, but, but uh, with different options. So depending on the complexity of the object that you want to print, you have the basic system, the standard and the advanced. Here is a picture of the advanced system. And on this slide, you have the basic and the standard system. Basic one is much more compact and, and more cost effective. Uh, a very important point is that we can print in a wide range of material. Obviously, these materials have to be photosensitive, so we call them photoresist. They have to, to be able to absorb light to uh, start to uh, polymerize. Uh, we, we, here is a table with different uh, type of uh, photoresist. Uh, let's go through the family. We, we can print into uh, epoxy, acryl, acrylate, uh, sol gel materials, uh, hydrogel, and even uh, some uh, biomaterial like proteins, collagen. So that gives us uh, the possibility to use the, the machine for a wide range of uh, applications. And I'm going to show you some uh, examples. Here is a very small object. Uh, this uh, object are in the range of uh, 5 to 10 microns on, on the left hand side it's 10 by 10 by 10 micron uh, roughly so each bar that you see in this uh, complex object is one micron in cross section so you can see the, the very high precision and complexity that we can uh, achieve uh, here is some more funny uh, example the, the famous uh, 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 flying uh, vessel from a, a famous film, famous movie. <laughs> uh, on, on the right hand side, this is a, a, a small gripping object that is used. So the, the sphere are a magnetic sphere. By applying an external magnetic field, you, field, you can uh, displace the, the gripper and, and then grip cells and uh, move them around. Here is a much bigger object, bigger because the overall size is uh, 600 micron wide, 300 micron thick by 900 micron long. So still small, but for us, we call it big compared to what we are used to do. The very impressive, impressive part of this one is the wall on the on the lateral side, the wall is only 10 micron thick by 300 micron high, which is quite a challenge to to be able to to manufacture manufacture such uh, aspect ratio. Micro optics is quite a, a very uh, key application for for us. The, the the big point here is that thanks to the fact that we can overlap the voxel, we can print with a very smooth uh, surface, which is key for uh, optical application. Scaffold for, uh, for, for, for meta materials application or for bio applications uh, to, to build 
for example, the scaffold for living cells, and then uh, the researchers can, can study the growth of the cell inside of the scaffold. Uh, cell filters on the left hand side, as small as two by two micron for the hole, so you can separate the, for example, the the red blood cell from the from other larger cells in, in, in the blood. Micro needles uh, on the right hand side with uh, a very small hole, as small as five microns. Uh, on the top, knowing that uh, human cell is around 20 microns, so it's four times smaller than a human cell. Large, uh, much larger object, uh, stent uh, made, made in uh, biocompatible polymers. The, the biggest one is 1.6 millimeter height, and the smallest one is about 300 micron height. Another example with a complex uh, capillary uh, system is actually the uh, representation of all the, the veins inside of uh, the, the, the uh, inside of a, a mouse. <laughs> So you, you, you've seen some of exa some example of what we can do with this equipment. Uh, now comes the the question and the relation to this uh, to, to this event uh, about uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we always want to improve the performance of our three D printers. It goes through improving the the the, the, the hardware, but also the software. And at the same time, we always want to simplify the the way our customer use the machine, uh, the training of the, the uh, during the training period. It can be complicated for them to understand all the different parameters and all the possibilities of the machine. And also, when they use the the printers, uh, sometimes you have different users and they they don't always remember all the. The, the, the tricks uh, for, for, for using the machine and uh, to obtain a very complex object. Uh, and they have many parameters uh, that they can optimize when they, they, they develop their own process with their own material. They can change the material, they can change the, the size of the voxel, the overlap of the voxel, they, they, they have access to the laser power, the speed of the laser the displacement of the laser beam, the laser wavelengths. So, so many parameters that sometimes, if you are not uh, an expert in laser matter interaction, can be difficult to understand all that and to optimize your process. So, the question, the big question is, how can we use uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence to both improve the performance of the, the printers and at the same time simplify the, the way the user will use and, and, and play. <laughs> at the end, we want him to play with the, with the machine. So uh, I'd be very happy to exchange with uh, the expert about that and we are open to, 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 to go in that direction and, and bring some uh, Machine learning and some other uh, intelligence in our software. Thank you for your attention.